Hi, let's look at the essay three. It's on page 45, a little information about it. And I also want to look at some sample essays I'm going to be asking you to, to read here. And your job is going to be to propose a solution to a problem that you're aware of and something that you take an interest in. And I'm going to suggest you pick a very small topic rather than world hunger or something like that. Um, and, and if you look at the first paragraph, I mentioned in there you can either do a single solution and then you'll have to argue why your solution will work. Or you can do a series of steps to solve whatever the problem is. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time on the second paragraph because I think this is crucial. I said uh, there's a crucial question that you have to consider. Why haven't people solved this problem? If, if everybody knows it's a problem, why haven't we solved it? You know, for example, we have a problem with uh, obesity in this country. We have a problem with uh, the education isn't what it should be in this country. Uh, we've got race relation problems and we've got all these problems in the country. And um, I said, what you need to do, if you're, whatever it is you're going to solve, I said, think of all the reasons people to continue to live with the problem. And so here's the part I want to really slow down and have you consider it. So here it comes. It's in the second paragraph, third line. Money. So money may be the problem. I remember years ago, somebody in my class was uh, advocating for a parking structure out at the college. And it, now they've got one, but they didn't have one back then. So I said, okay, that sounds good. I said, only one catch. I said, it's going to cost millions of dollars. Where's that coming from? Oh, and all of a sudden, oops, it's not like you have a magic wand and you just can shake your wand and ding, here comes the building. So the person was having to figure out, what do we do? Do we charge the students a fortune for parking? Well, that's not going to go over very big. So what, what can you do about it? So think about that. The first thing is, uh, is the, the money issue. So you tell somebody, hey, you ought to get in shape. That's going to be better for you. Live a long life and be healthy. So join the gym. Well, a lot of people don't have whatever the initiation fee is and the monthly fee. So you have to figure out how can you get around that problem of money, back to money again. Somebody's smoking, you say, go to a smoking clinic. Well, that costs money. Somebody is, uh, wants to lose weight and you say, uh, be part of Jenny Craig or some kind of nutritional program, but that costs money. So, I mean, do you see what I'm talking about here? That it's that money issue that keeps coming up. So you're gonna have to figure out how can you get people to deal with their problem and not have them spend a fortune. Okay, so there's one issue. How do you get them to uh, handle this as far as a money issue. Look at the second point down there, ignorance. Now I'm not talking stupidity, I'm talking ignorance. People just don't know. So you tell them, hey, you ought to eat better. Well, what does that mean, eat better? Uh, well, read a book about eating, about diet. Well, people don't know what book to read. Or you say, go on the internet, just type in eat well. Don't do that. If, if they don't know, make sure you give us, in your paper, give us websites to go to, people to contact, books to read, whatever it is, YouTube things to check out. But you've got to give us information because in many cases people are not solving a problem because they just simply don't know what to do about it. Uh, what if it's a political issue and you tell them, contact your local representative in Congress. Most people don't know that. They don't know how to find that person. Or you say, contact your local city council individual. Who's that? So you've got to give us a lot of information along the way. I hope that makes sense. Here's a third issue that people run up against, time. So you tell somebody, get in shape. It's going to take you about an hour a day, but it'll be worth it. Uh, who's got an hour a day? Can you see the problem? People are going to say, yeah, but. They're going to do that, yeah, but, because they don't have that much time. So your job is going to have to be, hmm, Okay, they may uh, you know, object to this thing. They may put up a defense regarding their time. So how can you get us to be in good shape with minimal time? And then maybe later on you can tell us how much time it's going to take. But you've got to start easy on people as far as time commitments. We're all so busy. So how are you going to do that? Here's another problem, fear. So what I mean by that? Well, you say, um, well, for example, you need to run and get your heart rate up. And you tell people, go out and run in your neighborhood. Well, maybe they don't live in a safe neighborhood. What's an alternative? Or you tell people, go to a gym and work out. Well, what if they're fearful of being you know, made fun of? 
or uh, dropping a weight on them or something, you know, getting their heart rate up too fast and having a heart attack or whatever. So in some cases, people are not doing what they know they ought to do because of fear. So you're going to have to take care of that fear and calm people down. Maybe it's, do you see the next one here, the L word? Maybe it's laziness. We all have that tendency of what they call it inertia, where a body at rest tends to stay at rest. That's the physics term. So we tend to not want to push ourselves and get out and do things. So if you say, look, you got to get in shape. Go out and run every day five miles. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So what can you do to overcome our laziness? Get us off the chair, get us off the sofa, get us out of bed and, and out and doing things. So how can you overcome that problem of us sitting around? Okay, so that's a big issue. And then one other one is the area of difficulty. If you tell people, yeah, you need to tackle this problem, and they go, it's overwhelming. I don't even know where to start. What are you going to do? Well, I'd suggest give people simple steps and before they get more complicated. Give people easy assignments before it gets tougher. Um, I remember somebody a while back did a paper about um, taking care of pollution, and they started with really, really simple things you could do around the home. Okay, that was nice. So look at those problem areas there again one more time. It's in the second paragraph. Think of all the reasons people continue to live with their problems. Why are they, what defenses are they going to put up? Well, I'd do it, but, oh yeah, I guess I could do that. I don't know. So you've got to overcome those. It's almost like hurdles in a race. You've got to keep overcoming one after another. So I said, as part of your solution or solutions, you're going to have to anticipate these reasons and you've got to overcome them. So this is crucial to your paper. Don't just say, I'm going to solve whatever the problem is, one, two, three, four, five. Here's what we ought to do. There you go. Yeah, but maybe it involves a lot of money. Maybe it involves a lot of time. Maybe you've got to overcome ignorance. You can't just throw solutions out there. If it's that simple, the problem wouldn't exist. But the problem does exist. So how can you overcome those things? Um, okay, so I, I always look at the bottom of the page, by the way. I have those bullet points. So these are some of the things I think you need to tackle as you're doing your paper. So let's, let's talk about the essays that are in this section. Just I'm going to give you a quick overview. I'm not going to read them for you, but I'll, I'll just tell you what's ahead so you know kind of what's coming. So the next uh, essay I'd like you to tackle is on page 46. It's called A New Deal for teachers. So I've got to give you just a little background about this. In this country, you probably are aware that if you follow politics at all, you've got a, a left-leaning group and you've got a right-leaning group. And the left-leaning group has always been uh, associated with teachers' unions. And the right-leaning group tends to be pretty suspicious of them. They don't think they're um, uh, they're spending their money well, and uh, the kids aren't learning much. So you got this kind of clash back and forth. So what is going on here is this guy who's written this, uh, Matthew Miller, is saying, we've got a problem. We're not retaining good teachers. And he gives a lot of statistics and things like that. So he's going to offer a solution. Now, he's only going to offer one solution. So I want you to look for that. And then he's got to somehow argue why that solution is going to work. So look how he tries to look at and work with both sides of the aisle. What do the teacher unions say? What do some conservatives say as he tries to make this work? Okay, so there's the first essay I'd like you to look at. All right, and then I wrote one that's on page 51. And I just called it How to Get Good Grades in English. I've taught a long time. And so I've seen a lot of students succeed, and I'm frankly, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I've seen some students not do very well because they didn't use some fairly simple steps that they could do. So this is a paper that's going to have steps, more than one thing that you can do. So take a look there and see what you think about that, and I've got some questions for you to answer about that one. And then I've got one on page 54. It was just a couple of years ago that uh, my wife and I ended up having to look for a car and uh, when I saw the sticker prices of the new cars I almost passed out I said good grief and I put a note here that uh, I said uh, the new cars are averaging over $30,000 I'll tell you what I wrote this several years ago 
The last I heard, it's nearing $40,000 to buy just the average new car in this country. is selling for about $40,000. $40,000, that was more than our first home that we bought. I mean, it still seems like an enormous amount of money. So when we went out looking, we decided pretty fast, yeah, we're not going to do a new car. So we started looking for a used car. But you know, if you've tried to buy a car, there are a lot of landmines that you can step on when you're trying to find a used car. It's kind of nerve wracking. So I wrote an essay, how to buy a used car. And I've, I've read some material about it. So it's not just my experiences. It's from several sources that seem pretty wise. So this is a series of things that uh, you might be able to do. Look at the order of steps that I have in here, for example, and try to decide if I seem to know what I'm talking about. This is something you're going to have to do when you write your paper. People have to trust you. They have to say, this sounds like this person has done some research. So make sure you come across as the expert when you write your paper. Okay, so that's that one. And then I've got something that uh, maybe some of you are going to kind of wince and go, wow, it's hitting close to home. It's on page 58. As titled Procrastination, what to do about writing that essay if you get around to it. I used to be a procrastinator, so I tell you a little bit about my story at the beginning, and maybe some of you are too. You know, they did a uh, they did a survey not that long ago, and they talked to students who were having trouble in their classes, and they said, "What are some of the reasons that you're having difficulty with your classes?" And one of the top reasons was procrastination, like this essay is talking about. People, it was unpleasant. They didn't want to do the work. They had a hundred other things going on. So they kind of shoved it aside, hoping they'd get around to doing whatever the work was later on. And that didn't happen. And they just fell further and further behind. So I hope you take a look at this essay and see what you think. First of all, can you trust me? I'm the author of this thing. Um, do you feel like it was clear? Were the steps there? Was it easy to follow? And you're going to want to do these same things. So that's the last of the essays I'd like you to take a look at. So key thing is, let me come back to, to you writing your paper. Don't do a major worldwide problem. Like I said, climate uh, change, don't tackle that. Why? Because everybody else is doing it and they're doing it in books. You can't do it justice in three or four pages. So you want something small, something that's maybe in your neighborhood, something you're dealing with. I'll tell you a few examples that I've had in the past have been really good essays. I had one student, he lived um, in an area where he and some other homes had, had a, a big field that, that came up against their backyards, big open field. And that field, nobody took care of it. It was like, who owns it? Nah, I don't know. So they kind of let it go and weeds were growing up and he was really concerned because this is when it was really hot and people are warning about possible fires. And he was really concerned that that field back there was gonna burn up and everybody's home would be destroyed as well. So he did a paper, and it was a really good paper. I had somebody else that uh, wanted to take her child to a nearby neighborhood park. But the problem was people were letting their dogs loose all over the place and the dogs were pooping and kids were stepping in this and she was having to clean shoes off all the time when they brought the, the kids home. So. She wanted to figure out how do we make a, a, a local playground, local park, how do we make that good for the kids? Um, I had somebody else talking about her street. Cars are going so fast. She said, I know somebody's going to get killed one of these days. So she tackled that. Um, I had a guy who said, man, I've just gone through money like crazy. If I've got it, I spend it. So he said uh, his girlfriend came alongside of him and took care of his finances and showed him how to save money. And he said it's really changed his life. So do you see what I'm talking about here? Something that's very personal to you, something you've struggled with. Maybe you haven't even succeeded yet. That's okay. That'd be an interesting paper. You're, you know, you're in the middle of trying to overcome this thing. Or it's something you have overcome and you're now telling everybody else, this is what you can do. I did it and you can do it too. So the more personal and the more local, the better. Please, please don't tackle those big things. Like I said, uh, gun control or abortion rights or whatever it is, they're just way too big. So keep it local, keep it simple. All right, thanks.